<laughs> okay, so I'm in the Photon Beard booth with the Photon Beard. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, sorry, Peter... Peter Dasson. Peter Dasson. Yeah. And then uh, I guess we met two years ago at Cynic. Yep. But uh, I guess at this time we've got a new product in this booth. We have. So, um, this guy here. Yep. This is our plasma light, the uh, Nova 270. Um, plasma is not a new light source. It's been around for a number of years in uh, street lighting and high bay lighting. We were the first to introduce it into a film and TV market. So not, not hive lighting? Not hive. We, we were actually, okay. we, we beat them by uh, around about two or three months. Okay. Uh, we launched at NAB uh, last year um, in April and they, they launched in June at Cinegear. So we, we were just before them. The light source is about the size of a Tic Tac Mint um, and then you, you bombard that with uh, very high frequency radio waves until the gases turn into a plasma and emit light. Uh, it's very efficient um, and virtually no heat in the beam. Uh, I, could, I could touch a glass on the front of the, 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 the unit here. Showing that you um, were actually touching it. Okay. And, uh, so, and the other big advantage with plasma is it's flicker free. So for high speed photography um, it's absolutely perfect because there's, there's no flicker at all. Uh, and if you're filming something like fruit or flowers, again, you don't have to use mashed potato instead of ice cream, for example. Okay. Uh, you can use actual fruit and flowers, um, and, and they will last you know, as long as they would normally last. Great. So the, this light, why is it being so cold? Like you have dichroic filtration, or is this that efficient? Or? It's, it's, it's just that efficient. The, the, um, so much of the energy uh, is, 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 is turned into light, and the heat that's generated is, is actually from the electronics drive the, um, uh, the, the, the radio waves to produce the light. Um, so the, yeah, the, the, the light source itself, there's, there's no elements in there to heat up. So that's, that's why it's so, so efficient and so cool in the beam. Cool. Uh, I guess to take a look at the actual physical light itself, I'm noticing there are a bunch of fins here on the bottom. Yeah. What are these for? If uh, that down, down the bottom there is, is, is the electronics that, that actually produce the, uh, the radio frequency. Uh, so basically the, the whole of that is, is um, cooling fins for the electronics driver. Okay. Uh, and actually, oh, this is actually much more asymmetric than I thought before too. So why, why is this light kind of shaped like this? Can you talk about that? Uh, we can't say too much um, other than the, the, the particular needs of the housing uh, to produce the, the beam quality. Um, it, we, we, we needed to house the light source differently to conventional style. Um, but then you also need to be able to attach a, a stirrup to it and, and, and you know, mount it from the ceiling or on light stand. Right. Um, so that's why we've gone for this sort of asymmetric shape. Okay. Uh, I guess then what is this box that's connected to it? The, this, this, this box is a, a simple um, uh, power supply. So that's just taking mains voltage in and producing uh, 28 volts DC output because the head itself actually requires uh, a 28 volt DC supply. Okay. So you could run it from a camera battery. Oh. Um, and if you have something like a 15 amp hour battery, the head would actually run for about an hour and a half um, on, on, on a camera battery. Can you dim it? It is dimmable, but when you dim it, it goes up in color temperature. Okay. So rather than um, use it as a dimming function, we, we prefer to use it as a standby function. So you can have all your lights set up, ready to go. Uh, you put it into standby mode, and it drops down to consume about 20% power. Um, but you know all the lights are still on. And then when you need to, you come out of uh, standby mode. It comes back up to color temperature and full brightness within a few seconds. Uh, and you can do your shoot and then go back into standby mode afterwards. Cool. I guess that you're, again, you're calling it standby mode. Though. Why? Like, it's either you can't quite turn off the, the light between it, the gates? At, at, the, at the moment, it's not uh, hot restrike. When, 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 if you switch it off, it needs about two minutes um, before you can switch it back on again. Uh, there will be a version very soon that will be hot restrike. That if you turn it off accidentally, it will it will hold the light level for a while. Okay. Um, if you turn it off deliberately, then it, it won't hold it. But if it's an accidental turn off, um, <laughs> it, oh, fair enough. Yeah. I guess it, more specifically, like not just talking about plasma in general, but like about the photon beard part itself. I see that you have a knob here, which is for focus. That, 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 that's that's the focus knob. Yeah. So you you can spot and flood the the the, the beam. Um, 
And uh, you know, one of the things that the Photon Beard is known for is, is uh, the, the, the quality of, of the light that our instruments produce. Right. We're, we're very focused on uh, making sure that the beam quality is the best it can be. Uh, as, a, as a luminaire manufacturer, really all we are, all we do is house other people's light sources. Right. Um, so you know, Osram might come up with a, a, a new light source, uh, and we look at whether it's suitable for our industry and how best to house it. Um, same with you know maybe GE, and that's exactly what we did with plasma, um, fluorescent, and, and we're doing with LED. Uh, at the moment, we, we haven't found a, a viable LED product that isn't just a copy of what's already on the market. There's no point in just copying what what's already there. We like to try and bring something new. Okay, no, fair enough. Anyway, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you.